Okay, so, we talk about perfect hashing. So, before that let us uh, in the last class we have discussed the universal hashing. So, today we will start with an uh, construction of universal hashing and the example of universal hashing. So, let us just recap what is universal hashing. So, basically it is a collection of hash function h is basically hash function from u to 0 1 up to m minus 1. So, our table size is our table size is 0 to m minus 1 this is our hash table size and we consider a collection of hash functions such that among this collection there is a bad portion and this bad portion is basically set of all function set of all hash function such that given any two key x y they will collide for all x not equal to y. If we choose any two key if we choose any two key x y which are not same then if we apply this hash function then they has to collide. So, if we if if our hash function is coming from this portion, then there is a guarantee that there will be a collision. So, if we choose any two key, then this has to this will collide. So, this is this is that is why it is called bad 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 portion. And if the bad portion cardinality of bad portion is if the size of this set is basically uh, 1 by m fraction of total set m is the table size basically, then this collection is called universal collection of hash functions. And if we choose a hash function randomly from this collection, suppose we have such a collection and if we choose a hash function randomly from this collection, then that is called uh, universal hashing, okay. uh, that hash function is called universal hashing. Okay. So, now we uh, talk about an example of how to construct such a uh, universal hashing or such, such a collection. So, that is the an example or we have to construct such hash function or such collection. So, construction of or example of universal hash function. Okay. Okay, so, here we so we have given key suppose keys are basically. So, this is a random choice. So, suppose let m be a prime which is the table size. So, our table size is m. So, we have a 0 1 up to n minus 1 this is a table size and this is a prime number We know prime number that means a number which is divisible by only itself or 1. So, there is no factor, uh, factor of that number this is an integer. Okay. So, now we have a key k we decompose this key into r uh, r bits r digits. So, k 0 k 1 I mean r plus 1 digits. So, k r where each of these k i's are coming from this. So, their value is maximum value is m. So, if we have a given key, key, key is usually very long. So, what we are doing? We are dividing this key into uh, digit like k 0, this is k 0, k 1, k 2 like this. So, last one is k r and each of this is basically bounded by each of this value is less than m. So, this is the decomposition on we are doing on the key. So, this is a key. Okay. So, now uh, what is the random strategy here? So, now this is the key. Now, we are choosing a constant a vector. So, we are choosing a constant a which is also a 0 a 1 a 2 a r 
where a i is uh, a i is also from 0 to m and a i are chosen randomly a i is chosen randomly. So, this is the random choice of a i. So, this this vector this is basically a vector a is a vector which is a basically uh, random numbers and each digit of this. Uh, so, these are all random digits and these are coming from the value is coming from 0 to m. Okay. So, this is a this is a constant which is chosen randomly from this is a random constant. random constant. So, we are choosing a, a i randomly from this, then we construct this, we have this a. Then how to define this hash function? Then hash function h of, so hash function will depend on this constant. So, it is denoted by h of a, a is this random vector, h of a on k. So, k is the vector, it is basically the inner product of this and this. So, it is basically the summation of a i k i i is equal to 0 to r then mod m. So, this is basically our hash function. So, it is basically uh, a 0 k 0 multiplication, these are all integer. So, a 0 k 0 plus a 1 k 1 dot 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 plus a r k r and then this this inert product may be more than m, then we have to take the mod m to fit it into the table. So, this is the hash function. So, this is called this this hash function is depending on this choice of a. So, if we choose a randomly, then we have a. So, for different values of for different different a, we have different different hash function. So, this a we are going to choose at the run time. Okay. So, now, so if we consider this collection like h, h is basically this collection a, where a is coming from a is basically a 0, a 1, a, a r and a i's are basically coming from this set, uh, this is 0 1 up to m minus 1 and this choice is randomly. Okay. So, this collection, this collection is a hash function collection. So, where we are choosing this a is randomly from this set 0 to m minus 1 and then once we choose a i randomly, we have this a vector random vector a, then use that random vector a, we define the h of a by using this formula, inner product formula. So, this is our hash function and this is our collection. So, we want to know whether this collection is a universal collection of hashing. So, whether this collection is a uh, universal collection. So, to prove that we have to uh, see the bat portion, I mean what is the size of the bat portion. So, let us just have the cardinality of h first. And this is a random strategy, because we are choosing the hash function randomly at the run time because we do not know which a i we are going to choose. This a i we are going to choose at the run time. So, once we got the a i, then we have the hash function using the formula. Okay, so, what is the cardinality of this set? So, what is the size of this? So, this is basically we are varying this a, a, a digit. So, there are how many? There are r plus 1 a i's and each of these can take value m. So, size of this is m to the power r plus 1, because this is basically the choice of a i. So, a 0, a 1, a 2 like a r. So, each of a i can be chosen m o s, this is m o s, this is m o s, this is m o s. So, the total possibilities is m to the power r plus 1. Okay. So, this is the cardinality of cardinality of this uh, collection h. Now, we want to see whether this collection is a uh, universal collection or not. So, for that we need to consider the uh, 
uh, cardinality of the bad portion. So, let us just uh, talk about cardinality of the bad portion. So, for the bad portion what we have? We know the bad portion is such that this is the set of all function h from this such that h of a x equal to h of a y where x y not equal. So, if, if given any two key and this is true for all x y given any two distinct key if they are colliding and if this is true for all such keys such pair of keys then that collection is called uh, bad portion. Now, we want to uh, we want to have the cardinality of this bad portion to have the cardinality of the bad portion let us uh, take x is a key. So, x is also in this form x r and y is another key y 0 y 1 y r and since x is not equal to y. So, any two digit of this at least any two digit of this will be not equal to y. So, for the simplicity we are taking x 0 is not equal to y 0 without loss of generality for the simplicity we can assume because we want x is not equal to y. Okay. So, now we take this x equal. So, so we actually want to find out the cardinality of this. So, h of a x equal to h of a y. Okay, so, this means this implies summation of a i x i is equal to summation of a i y i. So, mod n and this is also uh, mod n. So, yeah, so this is also mod n. So, this means summation of so i is from 0 to r mod m is equal to summation of a i y i 0 to r mod m. Okay. So, now this is the scenario. Now, this is basically. So, these two expression is equal under mod m. So, that means once we have two expression is equal under mod m, then we can say these two are so under the congruence relations. So, we can write this as or summation of a i x i i is equal to 0 to r is congruent to summation of a i y i i is equal to 0 to r mod m. So, this congruence is a relation is a relation. So, how this is coming? It is coming basically suppose this is a uh, equivalence relation suppose we have a set of integer this is the integer set. Now, we take a m now we we just take any integer and we divide we try to divide this by m. So, then what are the remainder? Remainder will be 0 to m minus 1. So, if you take any integer if you divide it by m then we have the remainder 0 to m minus 1. So, that will be basically the equivalence by the class A sorry. Okay, so, this is 0 class, this is 1 class or dot 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 this is m minus 1 class. Okay. Now, we say two integer say uh, x y we, we say two integer a b will be in the same class or they are related. So, a b a is congruent to b mod m when you say this if uh, a mod m is same as b mod m. So, that means, if we divide a by m the remainder will be same as if we divide uh, b by m suppose m is 7 say. Okay. Then 1 uh, then 8 the 1 and 8 they are congruent under 7, 1 is congruent to 8 mod 7 mod 7 or 8 is congruent to 15 mod 7, because if we divide 8 by 7 the remainder is 1, if we divide 15 by 7 then remainder will be 1. So, that means, 8 and 
15 will be in the same class, this class. So, so here if m is 7, so 8 and 15 will be sitting here. So, this is the equivalence classes okay. and this relation is equivalence relation and it will form a partition on this set and this is the equivalence classes. So, basically since they are under mod they are equal that means they are in the same class. So, that means they are related by this relation this is called uh, congruence relation congruence modulo m. Okay. So, anyway so this is basically giving us uh, this relation. Now, we want to take this uh, this side so, this is basically, so we have to take a 0 x 0 minus a 0 y 0 one side and then remaining are other side. So, summation of a, uh, so a i will we take common a i y i minus, so x i will come this side. Okay, so, so this is from 1 to r because we have taken a 0 x 0 here. So, we can take common of a 0 x 0 minus y 0. So, this is under mod m. So, that means what? Now, we have assuming x and y not are same. So, we have assumed x 0 is not equal to y 0. So, if x 0 is not equal to y 0 that means this is non 0 x 0 minus y 0 is not equal to 0. If x 0 minus y 0 is not equal to 0 then they have a inverse under mod m. So, we so basically a 0 is basically we equal to so summation of a i y i minus x i and this i is from 1 to r multiply with x 0 minus y 0 inverse under mod m. Okay. So, that means we are not having choice of a 0, a 0 will be determined by this and this is possible because x 0 minus y 0 is not a, a it is a non 0 quantity. So, it has a inverse, we can multiply the inverse both sides. So, a 0 is basically coming from this expression. So, then that means what? That means we have a choice for this a i is other than a 0. So, if we just write this, so basically the a i, so this is a 0, a 1, a r. So, this can be chosen m o s, this is a 2, this can be chosen m o s and this can be chosen m o s all this, but we do not have choice for a 0, because a 0 is coming from this expression. So, a 0 can be chosen only one way, because this is coming from this expression. So, that means, what is the cardinality of that portion is basically multiply of this. So, this is basically m to the power r. So, this is the cardinality of the bat set. So, bat set means where they are uh, coming to be equal. So, this is basically m to the power r and m to the power r is nothing but what? So, m to the power, so this is the cardinality of bat set m to the power r which can be written as m to the power r plus 1 by m and m to the power r plus 1 is the cardinality of h by m. So, the cardinality of that set is basically 1 by m fraction of the total. So, this implies this collection is h is universal collection universal hash functions universal collection. Okay. So, this is a now h is universal collection. Now, if we choose a hash function from this collection, then that hash function will give us the that hash function is called universal hashing. Okay. So, this is one example of universal hashing. So, it is also it is basically the random choice. So, if we choose the hash function randomly depending on the value of this vector a. So, that means nobody can come with some key the input set where it is colliding because we do not know which a we are going to choose at the run time. So, this is a random choice. Okay. So, this is one example of universal hashing. So, next we will talk about 
perfect hashing perfect hashing so it is basically a static arrangement so it is a static arrangement so what we are doing here we are basically we have given we problem is we have given n keys and we need to construct a static hash table that means we are not allowing anybody to join or anybody to delete from this table so the dynamicity we are not allowing here this set is static set so given this we need to construct a static uh, hash table of size n which is also order of n such that search will be taking in constant time such that search takes theta 1 time in the worst case in the worst case. So, this is our problem. So, our problem is we have given n keys and we have given a we need to construct a table and this set is static that means we are not allowing anybody to join in the set or anybody to delete from this set and this set is static. So, given this we need to construct a hash table and the table size is of order n such that the search will be faster. Okay. So, this will be done the uh, this will be done using the two level hashing two level hash table. So, the idea is to idea is to two level two level scheme two level hash function with universal hashing at each level with universal hashing at each level. So, we have basically two level hash function two level hashing. So, what is the idea? So, we have given we have a hash function hash table 0 to m where m is of size n and we have given our key set where are basically k 1 k 2 up to k n we have n keys. Okay. So, what we are doing? We are basically apply the first level hash function. So, we have a hash function h which is first level hash function. So, we will apply this as and this is also universal hash function we this is also coming from universal hash hashing. So, every level so we just uh, apply the hash function and it will store it will uh, mapped into these slots and there will be some collision. So, if there are collision suppose here uh, some uh, n i uh, suppose, so we are n, n keys we are mapping into this table. So, there will be some collision suppose in this slot there are say uh, two keys which are colliding. So, these two keys are say uh, 14 and 27 two keys are colliding in this slot. So, what we do we cannot fit it here. So, we will have a second level hash table, but in the second level what we are doing so, since two keys are colliding in this slot, we are having four slot for the second level. So, second level table size is uh, four for two keys. So, if it is three keys, it will be nine. If it is n i keys, it will be n i square in the second level. Okay. So, second level, so this is say 40 and 27. So, this is the second level. So, we have to apply the second level hash function. So, for that again this is coming from universal hashing. So, we have to choose a uh, a to have this hash function. So, this is a a means that vector h of a is our hash function. So, this is the first level hashing and this is the second level hashing. So, that means what? So, this is a 1. So, h of h is the first level hashing h of 
14 equal to 1 is equal to h of 27. So, under first level has function they are mapping to slot 1 and since they are colliding and there are only two keys are colliding. So, we need to have a second level hash table and I say in the second level we will have the table size square of that. So, two keys that means four table size. So, that means uh, and for that we need to have a hash function that hash function again we are choosing from universal hashing for that we need to have a a. So, that means h of 31 14 equal to so this is 0 1 2 3 is equal to 1 h of 31 27 equal to 2. So, this is the way. So, similarly, if there are only one is here, so then we do not need to have any second level, but if there are say 3 keys are colliding here. So, second level, so this will indicate second level how many what is the table size and this is the this is the second level hash table and the second level since 3 keys are colliding in the second level we have we need to have 9 is the table size. So, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9. So, 9 means up to 0 to 8. So, this is the second level and suppose these are the keys are colliding. So, say 40 say 37 and say 22. So, we know in the first level these are colliding. So, that means under h of 40 h of 30 they are colliding into the same slot and this is say ith uh, slot. So, there are 3 keys colliding in the ith slot in the first level hashing. So, for the second level we need to have uh, 3 keys so 3 square. So, 3 square means 9, 9 slot we need to have and for the second level we need to use a different hash function. So, that has function we are getting from h of a. So, a is 86 h of h of so basically h of 86 of 40 is 1. So, h of 86 of this is this. So, this is the way we do. So, this is a two level has hashing. Okay. So, now we have to so, so since we are taking a in the second level we do not want any collision. So, the second level hashing should be collision free and to guarantee that we are taking the size of the table is square of that. So, no collision at second level. So, this we have to ensure and for that reason we are taking the table size for the second level is double. Okay. So, we have to analyze that. So, before that how to search how the search is in constant time suppose we want to search 37. So, what we do? We apply the first level hashing. So, it will map to here. So, we know there is a second level hashing and we need to apply the second level hash function. So, here from we can get the second level hash function that information has to store here. So, if a is given we know the hash function. So, this a is given in this table. So, we know h of a. So, we know the hash function. So, we apply h of that on 37 we will reach here and we got 37. So, searching is just two hash functions. So, searching is theta of one time because just a two hash. So, theta of one time is the search time. Okay. So, now uh, searching is okay. Now, let us have a quick analysis of this why this is two types of analysis we need to do why there is no collision in the second level and we have to bother about storage also because we are using uh, intuitively it is uh, we are may be using lot of storage, but that also we need to analyze. So, let us analyze the collision at level 2. So, why it will ensure that there will be no collision is level 2. So, this is coming from this theorem let h be the be a class of because every level we are using the universal hashing universal hash function and in the second level the hash function table size uh, universal hash function for a table size. So, table size we are using the square. So, if there are n keys and we are using if there are n i's keys we are using n i square. 
So, suppose there are n keys in the second level and so the our table is in a n square for the n keys. So, n is the keys and the table size is n i square. Okay. So, now the theorem is telling the expected the expected number of collision number of collision is at most half that means we cannot expect even one collision also so how to prove this so to prove this so uh, if we take two two xy two keys now what is the probability that they will collide is basically 1 by m m is the table size it is basically 1 by n square because we are choosing the universal asic now how many pairs are there so expected so there are nc2 so expected number of collision is basically nc2 by n square so it is basically n into n minus 1 by 2 into 1 by n square this is basically less than half so this is the proof so even we cannot expect more than one collision this number of collision is at most half so that means because we have say we have three keys and we have nine slot so it is quite obvious that now the expected collision will there will be no collision because there are nine slot and three keys has to be fitted and our hash function is good hash function it will distribute the key uniformly over the slot so the chances of collision is less now let us do a quick storage analysis so, this is the second level that is why second level there will be no collision because number of size of the slot we are taking n square. So, analysis of storage analysis of storage. Okay, so, uh, so, what is the table size? So, first level we have this is the first level we have m is order of n we have n tables. Now, suppose we are n keys and suppose at the ith slot there are n i n i keys are uh, colliding in the ith slot in the first level. So, in the second level table size is n i square. Okay. Now, so what is the size in the second level table? Second level table size is n i square summation of n i square i is equal to 1 to m minus 1 and so what is the total size? So, m plus this this is the total storage. So, this is the storage for the second level where n i is the number of keys colliding in the ith slot after the first level. Now, if you take the expectation, so expected storage is basically m plus summation of expected of n i square or it is order of order of n i square. So, this is order of n i square okay, 0 to m minus 1. So, this expression we have seen for the bucket sort. If you remember we have uh, we have some keys and we are throwing into the bucket and this we have proved there it is order of n. So, this is order of n this is also order of n. So, this is the this is coming from bucket sort analysis bucket sort analysis. Okay, so, this storage is also order of n. So, we are not using really extra storage although it looks like that n i is the number of keys colliding. So, n i square it looks like we are using huge storage, but this is the analysis that we are not really using huge storage. So, storage total storage is order of n. Thank you.